with the WDF and he'll be wanting to produce something good. I wonder if he's going to be able to play anything like his fellow countryman earlier on, Jim McEwen, who for me produced by a distance the performance of the day. Absolutely right. And if we're looking at giving Mark Burrilli extra confidence, don't look too far back in the calendar because in October of last year, he won a Hungarian Classic in Budapest, beating Nick Fulwell in the final. That was on the 29th of October, and that was a very big day for Mark Burrilli, who's been around a long time. But that was a big win for him, and because of that win, that's why he's here. Good winner, a good uh, run as well in the Isle of Man Open. They have that sort of festival, if you like, don't they, every year? And uh, he beat uh, four decent wins before losing out in the end to Dave Prins, who who took that particular title, but he, he did throw well that weekend and he knows that he's got it in the bag and as you say, he's been in form and that's what these players are wanting, to come here feeling as though they're confident and not sort of being lost up there as we saw in the last hour or so. Very true. Now Hansen is in the lipstick with dart one. It's a side-on action, a bit of a pushy thrower. Whereas you look at the technique of Barilli, which is very uncomplicated. He's very swift. He can throw a lot quicker than this. And when he gets quicker, it's a good sign because when he's quick, he's... What Rory Hansen's got on the back of his shirt, he's relentless. He sort of, he sort of varies his speed, doesn't he? Sometimes he throws very much quicker than, than other times. And he's got a chance here of taking this first leg. He was looking, looking for, the, uh, for the four there. That's an interesting play from Burrilli. He had 66 left there Rory with two darts. Going for the bullseye on that spot is saying to Rory Hansen, I don't think you can hit this one to it, and it turns out that Burrilli was right. Hmm. Well, those sort of uh, tactics can sometimes rear up and, uh, and hit you, but he's got away with it. 27 then. Oh, he's quick on that, wasn't he? Yeah, and he's quick on that. In we go. With the cameraman on the toes, keeping our director on his toes. <laughs> Two people today day I've seen on 27 for a checkout. And I can't remember another time where I've seen people on 27. A bit odd, but first leg victory for Barilli. He's away, that's the important thing. And as they always say, it's the W which counts. A little shake of the head with that first dart, which was a bit of a blocker. Managed to find the target with the second, third, just floating into the single five. Scottish Dart is in a really good place at the minute, obviously with Jim McEwen this evening. You look at Peter Wright, the PDC world champion at the minute, he's the world number one as well. And don't forget about the ladies as well. Lorraine Hyde will make her debut here this week, and she's been playing some excellent stuff over the last year. Trying to follow in the footsteps of the great Anne Kirk former world master from well, Scotland, what a lovely lady. Rihanna O'Sullivan was the women's player of the day for me, defeating Paula Jacklin earlier on, averaging 86 Perfect. and a couple of, a couple of maximums and a couple of high scoring two dart finishes in the closing stages of the match and it was almost sort of rolling back the years wasn't it because she was one of the top players a decade well, or so ago and she's not been around and she came in on the back of a few personal problems with the uh, bereavements in her family and played just beautifully this afternoon. She really did. Well, we that phrase is used an awful lot these days, rolling back the years, but in Rianne's case, it was perfect. Not so perfect on this 144 from Rory, but a ton there is good when your opponent is languished on 300. Yeah, be happy with that. A couple of darts required when he returns to square up the match. Let's see if he's uh, 14. The confidence is on the doubles. 44 needed. Well, there's the 12 for double 16. Oh, unlucky. Double eight again. 28. He's definitely missing the doubles high. He will hope that he doesn't miss the double eight high this time because if he finds the northern double, he will bust the score. Big deep breath. Got six darts. Really languishing on at 180. 
could do with getting it, needs to just tuck this one away. Yeah, there it is. That gets him into the match. You see the little clenched fist. He knows that psychologically that's important for him. Yeah, you just want to get that first dart into a double. Now he can relax and into the game. But with Barilli's experience, I would expect him to just feel this one out and potentially get his first win. Doesn't mean he's going to get it. He may work too hard for it. He might want it too much. If he wanted too much, your yeah, mind is not going to be relaxed into the effort. WDF and do a separate set of uh, a separate set of rankings for those who just play or rather live UK and Ireland. And Brill is actually number five there. Yeah, that makes sense. He's been playing quite a few WDF's events over the last six months with success. He has won on the PDC Challenge Tour as well. Back in 2019, he's got a few other victories well, around Scotland, but I think for his ability level, John, I think he has underachieved to this point. Well, let's see, let's see how he progresses here. He's got to get past this fella before we start talking about his chances in the tournament. And Rory Hansen is throwing OK here. He's hanging on in there. And Canada have done pretty well on this stage previously with John Park winning in 1994. <laughs> Jeff Smith's made the final, and he lost out to Scott Waits when he won his second Lakeside title. Travel elusive. So Barilli's going to have the first opportunity for a checkout. And that's good. That is really good. I love that switch. It was a win-win situation going to the 18s. The single leaves 98, 96. The treble 57. leaves single oh, 20 and tops. 60. So to serve it out, 60 required. That's not the dart he was after. That is, and that's 40. not. Starting to pick up the pace there. Hansen options on 131. 51 is very popular for that checkout these days. Single 14 will leave tops. So pressure 40. has been applied for Barilli on 10s now. Got to get this one. Double five, double four, he split it, he went two double four, which, well, I'm surprised. I'm very surprised by that, two darts at double five, and I think he might get bitten. Sends out a negative message to his opponent, is he going to be able to capitalise? No. no score. Is really going to get away with it? Still double two, still Got to go to the left-hand side. He's got to open up this bed somehow and use the full length of the hockey and no somehow score. finds that gap that we couldn't see. Got, got it low, throwing it in from somewhere around cover point. No, wasn't he? Tops then for Hansen. Yeah, there he is, the and he gets his nose in front. Oh, and Barilli punished. Wonder if he'd have got that double five. We'll never know. I don't believe he made the right choice there, John. I just think that when you split the tens, you've got two darts available at double five. If you're going to miss that one, just give yourself a guide over the top and then go for broke on the last shot. Don't be thinking one dart at double four. I think that was a defensive play. Absolutely. And you don't often see leading players do that. The normal way is to go straight at it. I think you, I think you'd have been straight in on a double five. Oh, I love the double five in my day. It's next to double tops, which is one which you're going for. Absolutely. You know, and people, you know, most pros would say, yeah, double five, it's okay because I'm so used to going for double tops. If you under deliver a tops, what have you got? A double five, just by a centimetre. Small margins in this game, and Barilli at two one down in this first set. Is a bit of bother? It is. It'd have been, uh, it'd have been rated as the favourite to win this one with Barilli, but he's got himself in a slightly sticky situation. Needed that treble, or it would have been even more uh, worrying. There's another Scotsman in the draw playing tomorrow. Sean McDonald plays the game somewhat like Dennis Priestley, quite deliberate, but he has a great nickname, the Punisher. Does he weigh? Does he? Of those feather-like darts that Dennis used to have as well. What were they? About 12 grams yeah, or something. Yeah, somewhere between they? 13 and 14 grams, I think. The 1991 champion, where he demolished Eric Bristow in the final. 
great player on his day. That's a terrific visit. Maximum for Hansen. The wars of Barilli at the Lakeside seem to be continuing. Hasn't won a game on this stage previously. He might lose this first set. Dennis Priestley was a phenomenally competitive player. Really was. Never seemingly knew when he was beaten. Double 16. 51. Barilli really could use a bit of that mentality right now as he goes for Shanghai in 20s. There's 60 of them. 60 left. Tops. This would be picture perfect. Oh, just snatched at it. Yeah, that was a big miss, wasn't it? He's better part of an inch low there. Double eight, Hansen. Over pitched again. And finds the one that he needs. And so the man who's made the long journey from Victoria in British Columbia, Rory Hansen, takes the first set. It, it can't be ignored anymore, John, that's for sure. Poor averages. Can't be, can't be denied and can't be disguised. Well, we talk about the great averages, John, like McEwen from earlier. We have to talk about the averages when they aren't so good. It's only fair. Yep. Absolutely. Well, as ever, there'll be people sitting at home who play for their local teams in their local leagues thinking, I could give these guys a game. Maybe I could beat these guys. But of course, you've got to get up there and do it on the stage and that's the essential difference and you have to qualify for it first these guys have done that they've earned the right to have a go up here well this is better from Barilli he's gone into quick fire mode his first maximum interestingly John the winner of this game plays Nick Fulwell and it was Nick Fulwell that Barilli beat in that Hungarian Masters final back in October. Really? Yeah, that's, that, isn't, that is an interesting statistic. Or an interesting factoid, well gleaned. Nick Fulwell with one of the best dart shirts on tour. It looks like he's skinned a giraffe. It's really unusual. I'm not too sure about the uh, rights and wrongs about skinning giraffes, but... Uh, exactly. I wait to be uh, persuaded one way or the other. Well, Barilli leaving himself on double ten. Double twelve. One other end, 17. What a superb Rory effort that was from Rory Hansen on that 141. Yeah, He's lost the leg, but he gave Mark Barilli one heck of a scare. He steps up his pace, doesn't he, noticeably. He seems to have come back thinking, right, I'm going to go for it, I'm going to throw him quick, and if it works, it works, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, just looking for a different plan. I admire that. The sleeves on their right, or left throwing arm, I know that Makuru Suzuki does that, she does it for comfort. We will see Makuru. So we're checking into the hotel this morning, full of buoyancy, been playing in the live league this week and had a great preparation coming into the defence of her title. It was a, always a, a pleasure to watch her action. Interesting to see what sort of form she brings into these championships this year. Well, Barilli looking well set here to go two legs up. As he aims to square up the match, having surrendered the opening set. He's definitely changing the pace. Clearly. He's actually making Hansen throw quicker as well. Tops then. And it's been shown in a second lap. It was uh, certainly in rapid time. And 2-0. He'll feel a little bit happier now. He could wrap off six straight legs and beat his opponent. That's the ideal situation. He's a third of the way there. Hansen has to play his own game. He's got to be concentrating on his own performance, but Barilli has clearly upped the ante. What do in the break? Well, from an average of 72 or whatever it was, I don't suppose it's upping the ante massively, but he is definitely throwing significantly better. He's settled right into it. Oh, that's unlucky. That is very unlucky. He snagged that fifth treble, and all of a sudden you're thinking, first nine daughter at the lakeside for 32 years. Steady on. Start talking about that when they get up to seven or eight. So, so I've seen uh, 
See, he does go very, very close, and uh, and Wolfie here in matches in the not too far distant past. So it, it's overdue. I'll agree with that. I was talking to someone in the break between the sessions, John, and someone asked Martin Adams earlier today whether it was his last Lakeside, and he had to think before he actually answered that question. Well, he was in pain, wasn't he? I mean, and they, that's, the, that's the thing, and you don't like to see somebody like that who's been as good a player as he was. He was having, He's suffering with arthritis. Uh, his partner's not been particularly well. He's got a lot going on in his life. And he, he, he wasn't feeling good here. And, uh, well, I don't doubt that when time has just eased the pain, he'll feel a wee bit happier. Tops! And then there will be a proper decision to be made then. But when he when he lost today, he was in a bad way when he came off the stage. Yeah, I think that's very fair to see it. Rory Hansen needs this. Double six to save the set. Very well done. He still has a dream of winning this game by two sets to love. Absolutely. In boxing commentary, they talk about cojones, don't they? And he showed a little bit of guts there. That was a pressure dart, and he took it beautifully. It's like the same Pulp Fiction, isn't it? Kahunas. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Have you ever been over to British Columbia in Canada on your travels? I have indeed. I was there in 1994 for the Commonwealth Games. And an absolutely spectacularly beautiful place it is. I remember after the Games ended, there was uh, a concert that they put on to celebrate the Commonwealth Games. And there were 50 or 60,000 people Gathered, gathered around the harbour and the bay of, uh, of Victoria watching the crash test dummies, remember them? And it was just a brilliant, brilliant occasion, beautiful place. Yeah, I remember their biggest hit, mm, mm, mm. and that's a true fact, it was from the movie Dumb and Dumber. Good band, I tell you. And these guys aren't looking to crash, that's for sure. They want to sail into the next round. Where Nick Fulwell is waiting, the 12th seed. 84. Hansen could do with a ton of 40 here, and it's not happening. Oh dear. Now that could be punished. Burley in a good place now to maybe force the issue, and he's playing beautifully. Oh, oh, three wasn't what he wanted, but nevertheless, he's very much in a dominant position. The averages have been raised. Hansen up towards 76 now, but really up to 78. 72 are the points that separate Barilli from this set. So he's got to go 15 for ball, potentially. I think he's made the wrong play again. Going to 25 there was a risk, and Hansen can keep himself in the set again. Now he can do it. Single needed, and now tops. Oh, just, just drags it low. Great attempt. Double ten for Barilli. Not close. Not close enough. Took his time, didn't he, on that last dart. Bit of uncertainty there. Now Hansen tens needed. That's not a bad marker. Oh, overcompensated. Double five. And that's a good dart. He's still in there. It's two apiece. And he can win this match now if he takes this lag. The upset is very much on, and Barilli is in dangerous territory. Just looking back at Barilli's last match on this stage in 2013, John, he lost to Scott Mitchell, and he averaged in the late 70s in that match. So this is a pattern of behaviour that hasn't changed in nine years. Barilli was ready to start this deciding leg for this set then. And the referee said, oh, hang on, hang on, step back, step back. And, of course, it isn't him. It's Hansen who's got the darts. And the Canadian has that advantage as he advances on what he hopes is the leg win to provide him victory here. Back in 2013 when he lost to Scott Mitchell, Mitchell only won by three sets to two with an average just under 81. That may have been a big win for Scott Mitchell because only two years later he became champion here. Yeah, what a proud man he was. He just loved 
holding that title for the year. I think Scott's going to come up this week and join us at some point, which will be lovely to see the big Absolutely man. Absolutely is. I spoke to him late last week coming back from Germany on the same flight. We had a little chat. He's going to be joining us, I think, on Tuesday. Yeah, a pleasure to see him as well. One of the most popular champions that have been down here at Lakeside. Oh, that's a bad visit from Rory. He had a great opportunity there of putting distance between himself and his opponent, who was 2 0 up in this set. Celebrated, well, well celebrated. He used his money, didn't he, to buy a, a new tractor for the farm. And then, am I right in saying he forgot there was VAT to pay on the top of it, so he got to find another 20 grand? Oops. Never forget about the tax man. First person you pay when you win something. <laughs> 51 needed. Doesn't find it, so Hansen does have a chance to win the match on 119. This is then for the match. What's he going to do? Trouble 20 is the way to do it. He's got it. Tops for the match. And there it is. A brilliant checkout to claim it. 119. There can be no quibbles from 